Cam. All right, guys, good morning. Uh, happy January 19th. It is officially 8.35, so let's go ahead and get started. Coming to you full of excitement, full of passion. I was a little bit sick after Focus and Fire. For some reason, when you're around that many people, uh, you know, you just there's a lot of germs going on around <laughs> this time of year. There's uh, a lot of people sick, and so unfortunately, I started to feel a little bit under the weather yesterday, but today, I think I'm coming um, out of it. And so good to see everybody. Let's go ahead and look at the mic. I have a bunch of people here. So I want to see who's going to bring us out on the field on this beautiful, beautiful Friday morning. And it's actually going to be George. George, you got a lot of things going on. And I love seeing the side by side photos of you and um, Daniela yesterday because of your guys' growth over the last couple of years, what you've been able to do, contribute, who you've become in real estate has been really, really powerful to see. So, George, if you can share some sentiment with us, let's kick this thing off. So, George Martinez, our new star of American Dream TV, let's have you go, big dog. So, hit him with it. Yeah, what's up, everybody? And happy Friday. I'm super excited to join you guys all here. Um, I just got home from a 5 a.m. workout. Um, so it's Friday and I know we're all kind of going into the weekend. We're probably have a lot of friends that are like, you know what, you want to go out, have fun this weekend. Well, usually remember we're our own boss right now. So this is go time for us. This is where you hit the, hit the gas. Um, when you don't want to do something, that's when you should do it. That's the best advice I was definitely given yesterday. I definitely, did two back-to-back -back coaching calls, didn't want to do anything. And I told myself, you know what? I'm going to make at least two more calls. Making those two more calls ended up booking me uh, two showings for today and a buyer consultation for tomorrow. And then one showing uh, tomorrow too. Um, so do it because I almost gave up. And that brought in uh, a potential about 4.5 in sales volume in just weekend appointments. So definitely... If there's not a fire lit under your ass, hopefully I'm lighting one for you because no one's going to pay your bills other than yourself. So what's better than being broke, being busy as hell. So get after it today, you guys. I believe in you. And if you have trouble believing yourself, shoot me a DM and I will send you a video to get you pumped up and borrow my energy. Uh, I love it. I love it. And George, it's just been exciting to watch all of your growth. It's I'm excited for this next chapter. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, and then Greg as well from from uh, Arizona. So if you guys want to hop off a little bit early, I don't want any of the stuff from yesterday to be redundant today. Um, and so because I am going to use some of the content from yesterday. We had a different meeting yesterday. But you guys, a couple of things I want to share with you. First off, how many people were at Focus and Fire? Because I think that there's some really good points that we should talk about here before we really get rolling, because there were some action items that I think each of you guys could deploy in your business right now. So first and foremost, who was at Focus and Fire? Just give me an emoji. Give me a hand up. I know that the crowd was packed. All right, cool. Quite a few people there. Who wants to share one, two, three takeaways from that event and something that inspired them to take action in their business and or their life? Was there one thing? Was there two things? Was there a handful of things? Who wants to share a couple key takeaways from that event to share what you learned? Um, you know, that everyone poured into each other. So who wants to go first to share some of your takeaways from Focus and Fire? Who wants to go? I do. Uh, all right, cool. All right. So uh, for the people that don't know you, this is Elaine. She was a guest of Blessing. She's actually officially joining our team. Um, and so I'm really excited to have you here. So Elaine, hit them with it. What were two takeaways from that event on, what was it, Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday already. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, I was very inspired by uh, the, the, the speakers and the way they got there. Um, also about the energy in the room, how this group is so active and so excited. It pumped me up for me to, you know, bring my business up. And I am so excited to be joining your group. This is fantastic. And I, I mean, I cannot tell you, I slept well last night, actually. I've been sick, but I slept well. So. Oh, I love uh, that. I love it. And sometimes it just takes you being around a collective, right? And sometimes somebody said it like, don't do this alone, right? Like just being a part of a group that is 
already doing the things that you want to do, I think that it motivates you, but doesn't motivate you, doesn't motivate you enough to take the action. And in Elaine's case, it motivated her enough to take the action and say, you know what, I need to change. I want to be in a different organization. I want to be around people that are winning, that are running at a very rapid pace. And so, Elaine, I'm looking forward to working with you and learning more about you. Um, let's go, Viet. Viet, you had your hand up, big dog. Tell me, and by the way, if you guys don't follow Viet, go to Viet's uh, page right now on Instagram. Viet, you can drop <laughs> your handle. He has this really cool tool that you put on. It's like a cylinder and you put it on any type of color, paint, so on and so forth. And then the app will tell you exactly what co color that is. Oh, it's cloud white. It's ivory. It's this forest green, whatever it is. I thought it's a really, really cool app. So go and check Viet's uh, stories or excuse me, his recent posts and get that tool because I thought it was the coolest thing that I've seen in a while. So Viet, hit him with it. What was some of your takeaways from Focus and Fire? Well, thanks for that, Elias. Yeah, that, it was a great event, you know, getting a group of like minded people together, talking about what works for them, sharing, you know, trade secrets. But the, the, some of the takeaways that I got was, you know, hearing their st amazing stories. It, it was like, you know, make these connections with people. Right. It's it's about people. It's re about relationships. It's about how can we serve each other? And, um, you know, a lot of it is Peter, you know, he, he said, automate your, 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 your business, right? If the, the most, if you can automate it, if, you know, uh, if you're not busy, if you don't, you know, if you, <laughs> if you can remember all your contacts, you're, you're not busy enough, right? Yeah, uh, hold on. Say, say that one more time for the people in the back of the room. <laughs> if you can remember all your contacts and your leads, you're, 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 you're not busy enough, right? So you need a CRM. You need something that there's a system, put a system in place. So when you get a client, a lead, boom, they, they go to your funnel and everything's automated. And so that was, that was really good feedback and, and, you know, knowing his system, right? Real scout, what, 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 whatever you use, real scout, follow up boss, learn it, use it. Um, and, and, you know, just uh, the connection automated. Uh, we talked about virtual assistances again, another way to automate. Right? How can you make it so that you're focusing on the 20% and and not the busy, busy 80% work that we all do? That's probably you know less stress from you. How you know? How can you automate your system so you're focusing on the 20% and do the things that you love doing? Right? Love Lots it. Lots of takeaways there. Beautiful, beautiful. Well said. Let's go. To blessing, blessing. One, two key takeaways from uh, Focus and Fire, and what are you going to implement in your business right away? Let's go. Good morning, fabulous people on this beautiful Friday. So key number one that I took away, um, on your Instagram, on your social media, please put a link where people can book a consultation with you because we put out all of this content. And if they don't have any way to, of their own way, get in contact with you, what's the point? So that was number one. Um, proximity is everything. And being in the room, like Elaine said, being surrounded by all of the energy, positivity, it makes you think and make you realize this point. Real estate looks like what you want it to look like. It doesn't matter your brokerage. It doesn't matter your skin color, age, or anything. You make this business look and run the way that works for you. So be you truly, ultimately, 100% apologetically, and you'll, you'll have a good life. God, I love that. Really great takeaway. Um, I did a coaching session with Blessing yesterday, and we did a role play through her buyer's consultation. I got to give you some credit, Blessing. The way that you articulated, the way that you explain contingencies and the escrow process, it was straight fire. So I'm so excited to see how you've grown in just a short amount of time that I've been in your world. And so it's great to see what you're applying and that, you know what, you've taken some knocks on the chin, but you're still in the fight no matter what. So hats off to you. Let's go to Brandy. Brandy, um, key takeaway from the event. Was there one? Was there two? Was there multiple? Let's hear from you. Share with the group. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I have lots of takeaways, but I won't, I won't take up all the time talking about it. But um, the main takeaway, and I think it's probably just a, a repetitive thing to, of through everyone is, uh, but I, I labeled mine different. It's your presence and your value. Um, and, and like Elaine said, um, it's being around the energy 
But when you put yourself around that energy, it, you're like feeding back and forth. Um, so that was like the big takeaway and just showing up, having the courage to show up because listening to all the speakers, they all had different stories. Some came from good backgrounds and some came from, uh, you know, not so privileged backgrounds, but there was one takeaway, they all showed up. They all had the courage to put themselves in rooms around people. They had the courage to be present and they had the courage to show their value and to receive value. So I think that was the takeaway because that goes along the lines with being in real estate. You have to show up, you have to give value and you have to see the value of everyone else. So God. I absolutely love this. So really, really great takeaway. I appreciate that. You guys, yesterday I shared in our Play Bigger Mastermind group, I, I shared that that day I got up at four, I went to the event. Obviously I have to be a host. I have to make sure like the rhythm is good, like introduce the speakers, do them justice, ask them questions. Get, like there's a lot of that's involved. And then after that, I was spent, you guys. I have to say hi and I have to shake hands and all those things. And then I, I looked at my calendar that morning. I'm like, ah, can I reschedule any of these? I'm like, no. I literally had four appointments directly after Focus and Fire. I was tired. My voice was spent. But I did it anyways, despite. And then yesterday I woke up and I didn't feel good, but did it despite. And here's what my coach told me. She said, we all have to have an ability to manufacture energy. And I want that to be some of our cadence or excuse me, some of our sentiment for the morning. There's going to be times where you don't feel like doing this business. There's going to be times where you don't want to make the phone call. There's going to be times where you're going to have to show up on, on social and you don't really have the energy. So what are you going to do to manufacture that energy? Is it a run? Is it a talk with yourself? I don't know what it is, but you have to find a way to manufacture energy. And I've been doing this at a very, very high scale for a very long time. And, and when somebody labeled it and said, Elias, what you do is you manufacture energy. I didn't even realize what that was. And I think about it like that's a choice. You guys, that's the choice. How you show up on the screen is a choice. How you show up in your business, that's a choice for your family, the energy. Like we all have to be masters at manufacturing energy when we don't necessarily feel like doing the things that we truly want to do in this business. Does that make sense, everybody? How are you truly, truly manufacturing the energy when you don't want to do the things that you truly, truly know that you have to do and should do in this business? And so I want to shout out to you. Any other takeaways? I know we have some of our speakers here. Um, Ashley, you're here. Vernon's here. Ophelia, my co-moderator. Anybody else have any feedback, any thoughts, any sentiment, any insights before we keep cruising? All right, cool. Let's go. Uh, let's go, Hugo. Let's go, Romel. Awesome, Hugo. What's good, my man? Good morning, Coach. Yeah, I had uh, two big takeaways. Uh, the first one was the the one I the SWAT one, the, the identifying and all that, the strengths, weaknesses. That was good. And then another one that was really really good was Ashley's uh, presentation about identifying identifying the different stages and pretty much the different advice in each each different stage. So that was nice. Good stuff. Good stuff. Romel, let's hear from you. And then uh, if I don't have any other speakers or uh, the speakers that don't want to contribute, we'll, we'll keep cruising. Romel, what's good, buddy? Morning, everybody. If you weren't there, you definitely missed out on some serious pouring into your soul um, and business. Key takeaways for me, uh, number one, focus on five to six specific things, not a hundred little things. Invest in yourself before you start investing and pouring into others. Fill your cup. Uh, three, activity times effectiveness equals results. If you're not getting any results on the activities you're doing, stop doing them. Uh, do what you're good at. And then the last one, if you want, if you want it, find someone and model that successful behavior. Um, for me, number one, <laughs> number one is what I am brutally focused on. Stop trying to do so many things. Focus on a few things and do those things well. Wow. Wow. Well said, my man. I absolutely love this. Let's go to Vernon. Vernon, you had your hand up and then I got some thoughts I want to share with you guys. Oh, Melody, I saw her hand go up as well. Let's go, Vernon. A powerful event yesterday. Elias, kudos to you and the brainchild behind it. Uh, Ashley really, really enjoyed her presentation and the content that, that she presented. 
uh, you know, just so many jewels and gems that were dropped yesterday from the various perspectives that really just in totality, it was beyond empowering. I don't, I don't think inspiration is an accurate enough term to describe the frequencies and the vibrations that were present in that room yesterday. But, you know, my biggest takeaway is that we all come from different walks of life. We all have different perspectives and journeys as to how we get to the end of the road. No one's more valuable than the other. They are all equally as valuable. And the the final piece for me, I was so happy to see Melody in the building yesterday. So, you know, that brought a smile to me. I'm in her downline. She's the reason that I was introduced to Elias. She's the reason that I'm in this space. And uh, I just love her hella much. So not only was it inspiring, encouraging, empowering, it was also good to see, see Mel in the building yesterday as well. Yes, I love it. And and check this out, you guys. It was less than two years ago, right, Vernon, that you joined the team? What, it's been a year and a half now, about? About a year. I joined in December of 2022. So about a year. So I'm driving. I pull over in an AM, PM parking lot to have a call with Melody Lissette as well as Vernon. And I heard him speak. I'm like, man, this guy's powerful in the way he uses his words. And, and I was just, you know, we had a really, really solid conversation. And then less than about two hours later, I was able to meet him in person at an event that Melody was throwing. And so when you think about it, you guys, Vernon's still relatively new to real estate, right? He's still relatively new. He's in his first couple of years, but he's not new to communication. He's not new to marketing. He's not new to building wealth, right? But if he's been able to do that in such a short amount of time, now he's hitting stages, got asked to speak at Focus and Fire, and I'm sure there's going to be more opportunities for him to speak and share in, in the future. That's, a, that's an opportunity for you guys. Because by a show of hands, how many people on this call feel that they have something of value that they could share with mass amounts of people? Just raise your hand. Totally, right? And, and, and you see, like, Ophelia didn't want to be a public speaker. She hated public speaking, you know, years ago, two years ago. She was so frightened about that. But, like, think, like, I want you guys to show up not only here, but raise your hand for opportunities, you guys, because you never know. Somebody might say, look at Roxanne spoke in the event yesterday, Silicon Valley. Ophelia has five speaking engagements. I'm speaking at Inman next week. You think about the opportunities that you guys have just to build your brand and build your identity. I'll tell you what, you guys, it, it like literally Vernon is brand new and he's already doing it, you guys. So there's nothing, nothing standing in your guys' way. So super, super stoked to have you up on that stage, my man. Let's go, Melody, Melody. Key takeaways from our time together in uh, Oakland. Let's hear from you. It's good to see you. It was good to see you too. Thank you so much for putting on an amazing event. Um, the energy in the room was insane. As always, Team Fast, Fast Real Estate always brings the heat. I expected nothing less. Uh, Vernon, it was also amazing to see you. And I'm a huge believer in energy. And I feel like, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe. And that's exactly why Vernon and I met. That's exactly why Lizette and I met. And I look forward to attracting more people like that into the organization and into Team Fast. Whoever's a great fit, I'm sending them to you, Elias. You already know. But really quick, I just wanted to give you some key takeaways. I jotted down a lot of notes from Patty's segment of the session, but I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, a couple of things that she said that I thought were key was the economy that we're witnessing right now is the most resilient economy that we have seen in our lifetimes. Affordability levels are extremely difficult for Americans across the country. It's not easy to be a homeowner. Homeownership is not for everyone. And us as industry professionals and leaders need to focus on educating people that actually want it and people that are seeking home ownership and have the means to do it. Um, home prices from the 1940s to 2023 have only gone up. Yes, there have been dips and um, you know roadblocks along the way in the market, but they have steadily rose decade after decade. Uh, another thing, a couple of good reads is Patty reads the Redfin News daily. So that's a good place to get grab some market data if you guys want to bring that onto your newsletters or, you know, onto your social media reels, your posts. 
And then your local market updates as well. So what, wherever your local market is, make sure you're reading up on that. And just Google it. Like this morning, I Googled Walnut Creek Real Estate News today. And it was awesome just to scan through the articles. Another thing is an economist that she threw out there, Mark Zandi. Um, I haven't had the chance to look him up yet, but if Patty's following him, I'm definitely going to put him in my notes to follow. Um, and then the last thing I'll wrap this up with, I'm trying to keep it short, is anyone who's analyzing information from online articles are making bets. These are not bets that you can base your life savings on. So make sure that you're not just bringing the noise and the headlines to your social media or to your newsletters or when you're having your one-on-one -on -one conversations with your buyers and sellers, but make sure you're giving them actual data, numbers, and facts because numbers and data take the emotion out of everything. And we all know that buying or selling a home is extremely emotional for people. Um, three things, three things to pay attention to in the markets or online when you're reading and educating yourselves is unemployment, the labor market and inflation. Wow. I mean, absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. You guys, I dropped the Redfin blog down below. Make sure you subscribe to that. Make sure that you're checking that out. There's lifestyle pieces in there, buying, selling, market trends, all those things. It's a really, really good daily read. Now, if you were in that room and you heard Patty speak, now this wasn't coming just from a lender. It felt more so like we were hearing from an economist. And, and I get that when, when Ashley speaks too about the market, it feels like I'm listening to a true economist. There needs to be a basic level understanding about uh, economics, right? And if you don't have a basic level understanding of economics, then you need to read more and you need to understand. Because when Patty was up there, I promise you this, when she was speaking, nobody was doubting what she knew. If you were in that crowd, I felt like it was like, damn, like, like straight fire. But I, I have some notes here, and I shared this yesterday with the group. Um, your experience is great, but it isn't synonymous with expertise. I think that we all need to become even more professional in the way that we're studying and understanding the market. And I wrote here, and this is from notes from years ago, expertise meaning doing the exhaustive market research understanding consumer trends, psychology, communication, relevancy, patterns in the market, and being able to understand exactly what's happening. So when you get on a buyer's consultation, when you're sitting at a listing appointment, that you have such a high level understanding about the patterns, the nuances, the trends, the markets, the microclimates, to where you can speak intelligently. What happens? What happens is that so many of you go into a presentation. I'm not knocking anybody on this call or whoever will see this in the future. What I'm saying is that we go into these, these appointments based on our personality and we are good enough to book the appointment and I got all kinds of energy. Well, that energy is only going to get you so far if you can't back it with some solid data. So you have to make sure that you are masters of not only the communication process and connection and energy, because yes, that is important, but what are you doing to become an expert to worry when you grab the mic and you spit some fire like Patty, it comes across in a way that is gospel. And I've said this time and time again, you have to deliver market information in a way that nobody, nobody would question you because it hits with straight facts. And like Melody said, you remove the emotion from it and you under you help them understand based on the data. Listen, we're going to go through the data right now. And based on the data, we're going to make a decision on what we believe our offer amount's going to be. I'm going to remove my opinion from this. Now let's have that conversation. If you could speak to a consumer in that way, and you are so concise, there is no room for doubt. There is no room for doubt. So what I want to encourage everybody to do is to study. And if you don't have the time, you think, find an accountability, homie. Wake up earlier. Listen to stuff when you're on your morning walks. Whatever that looks like for you. If Kenny can read as much as he does every single day, there's no reason that we as a collective cannot read more and more and more. So I want to share that with you guys. Really, really good takeaways. Let's shift gears. I have some stuff prepared because I'm going to turn this back over to you. But before I turn this back over to you, because George, Greg, you guys can dip out in a second. But George, my man, American Dream Home TV, uh, American Dream TV, what does that mean for you? Congratulations. What does the, you know, the road ahead look like for you, for exposure, for uh, for content, all those things. I want you to talk about this rapid fire. Let's hear from you because I, I want to make sure to give you uh, some light here. Yeah, so thank you. Um, 
Well, I do have to say like huge thank you to you, Elias, because I feel like you definitely contributed to me getting this opportunity from being on these coaching calls. I remember when I first joined the team, you really challenged me to do video and get on video and it was so uncomfortable to me. And now I would honestly say that video and property tours and highlighting restaurants and just showing up on my Instagram story day in and day out has really helped my business to now toward the end of last year and more in this year, I've been more focusing on just social media and nurturing those leads and going all in. And that's where this led me to this opportunity is also not only through social media and just posting all of those property tours, but highlighting local businesses, but showing up to like all of these networking events and putting myself in all of these different rooms. And I have to say, I don't see many of you guys in these rooms. So you guys got to get to these networking events because this is where this opportunity also came about was I went with a friend to a few networking events, met someone who was on the show themselves in Orange County. And that person ended up following me on Instagram and was like, yo, back in at the end of November, reached out and was like, yo, I'm on this show. I think you have a fire ass personality. You're already doing your property tours, highlighting local businesses, which we do on the show, except you do it with a cameraman. And instead of just hitting social media, you're going to be on Apple TV, Fire TV, like um, what's it called? Amazon Prime and like on weekends, it's on like CBS and ABC, but they're like, and I think they just added like the travel channel. So it's definitely aligning with so interesting with my goal for 2024. At the end of last year, when I was putting my business plan together, I put that I wanted to build a brand like Ryan Sturhant for the Bay Area. And it's just so interesting to see how this is coming into fruition. But it's also going to give me an opportunity to really set myself apart from other agents, especially when I go on listing appointments too. Like that's one of the biggest things that I'm leveraging the show is to build even bigger brand awareness. Cause as you guys go to all of these like networking events, masterminds, they're telling you like Ryan Serhant, Josh Altman, like Tracy Tudor, all of these people that are on million dollar listing or whatnot other shows they're building brand awareness and this is how they're getting all of their clients because they're in front of people's eyes time and time again just repetitively so as nervous as i am i figured i gotta get uncomfortable to uh, uncomfortable to get comfortable or whatever the saying is and i'm pushing myself beyond out of my comfort zone and it's definitely helped me a lot more than I could have imagined that this is going to make me more credible to all of my clients that are seeing me because I'm already getting clients that see me on Instagram or social media and they're like I went with you because I vibed with your personality now this is going to give me an opportunity to show that I'm an even bigger expert in the Bay Area so I think I'm toggling right now between my first episode being between doing Walnut Creek or doing Hayward and really just stretching out and reaching out to the local business owners. So it's kind of like what you tell us to do already, but now it's just doing it on a national show that is an Emmy nominated show and goes across the nation to reach people at the masses. So it's definitely like, I agreed to it too, because I chatted with a bunch of other hosts across different markets that are on the show. And just to see what it's done for their brands, like some of them are pulling in like $6 million listings or getting like people to reach out to them. And when you are going to a listing appointment, now it gives me that opportunity to be like, hey, something that sets me apart from another listing agent is that we've seen Selling Sunset, right? Well, your sh your house is going to be on Selling Sunset next year. I am going to film your house in March. And when we go live in April, your house is going to be on on the show. So it's going to be cool because then I can add writers on the first sale, for sale sign saying as seen on TV which then is going to give those sellers an extra umph and it's going to bring like an even more shabam, I feel like to my marketing. So I'm definitely excited and thank you guys for creating an environment that has like pushed me to get out of my comfort zone because without this environment, I wouldn't have had this opportunity. Shabam, shabam. shabam. Oh. I love that. I love that, man. It's just so exciting to see all of your growth. And, and here's the thing, you guys, um, if, if you spend enough time with me and if you apply the things that I am going to to advise you to apply, because somebody has probably told me the things that I am telling you, I'm going to piss you off. And I'm going to be real with you. I, I've been able to coach thousands and thousands of agents and the, the people that I've pissed off the most in this industry, I've seen tremendous growth. So listen, you guys. 
a lot of the things you'll hear me say and be like, okay, it's not for no way. Oh my God. He's just, he's just so intense about it. I'm intense about it because I have seen what happens on the other end. It is, I have a responsibility, you guys, to see the optimal you, even when you don't see the optimal you. And that's a challenge. And so you guys, I'm going to piss you off. I'm going to push you. I'm going to hold you accountable. And the people that run towards that, it's like, gosh, Jimmy, I've pissed George off. I, I remember a conversation. He's like, I was so mad at you, Elias. I'm like, good. And then what did he do? He didn't defess her. He went and did something about it. And he got his ass on camera. You guys, I'm going to piss you off. And I'm going to push you because I know what is on the other end of that. And there's so much opportunity. So, George, great stuff to you. I absolutely love the sentiment. Um, George, if you want to hop off, you can. Greg, if you want to hop off, I'm going to share a screen right now. I'm going to awesome. do something. Thank you. Happy Friday, everyone. Kick ass this weekend. That's right. That's right. All right, guys. I'm going to share something with you guys. Take this up here. All right, cool. We're going to do something a little bit different. Can everybody see my face and can everybody hear my voice? Yes? All right, cool. Because yeah. I just changed I want to make sure. All right, cool. So knowing thyself, we're going to go through a quick exercise and I want you guys to be very, very clear with your answers. So first things first, what were three things that happened to you last week that were um, great? So, so was it in your personal life? Was it in your professional life? But if you can name three things that truly, truly were great in your life and business last week, what would it be? And I'm just going to get this started. I'm going to go over to uh, Buyer Tours. I love that. I'm going to go to Lisette. Lisette, um, give me three things that made your last week great. What were three great things in your life and business? Let's go. Um, okay. In my personal life, uh, so my son, my eight-year-old has been having a tougher time at school. I switched him from private to public. I just left an award show where my boy was recognized for his uh, improvements in his scholastics. So I'm incredibly proud. All the hard work we both put into it has paid off. Um, secondly is I am putting myself in a room. Finally, <laughs> that has been a little bit uncomfortable, but I am, we can't grow if we are not uncomfortable. And last but not least, one of my biggest um, goals for 2024 was public speaking and becoming a better public speaker. And so I joined Toastmasters and that has been an eye opener. And I had a, a first public speaking event yesterday with some of my wonderful, amazing teammates. In all honesty, you guys, it was horrible. I was horrible. But the moral of the story is, is that I put myself out there and I recognize, okay, I need work and I'm not going to get better if I don't do more public speaking as much as I loathe to do it because it does make me uncomfortable. So after the event, I reached out to my girl and I said, listen, I need to put myself in places where I could be speaking publicly. Can I please start emceeing these events moving forward every single Thursday? I can present, I could start off our meetings. And of course she said, yes. What I'm getting at is I am proud of myself for pushing myself and doing what I actually said I'm going to do, not just saying. Wow. Wow. I love it. I love it. Great stuff. Great stuff. And you guys, if you don't answer it here, make sure to grab a shot of this and you can answer it on your own. So the main struggle I faced this week, and if I were mentoring someone dealing with the same struggle, I'd advise them to do what? And I think this is powerful because if you have an answer, then you have an answer to the challenge that you're facing for yourself. So who wants to take a crack at this question? Anybody want to raise their hand and answer that question? And if you don't, I'm just going to pull somebody up randomly. Let's see who I have here. Who raised their hand? Um, take yourself off a of mute because I, I'm having trouble seeing everybody. Okay. Oh, shit. There's quite a few. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's go Ophelia. Ophelia, let's go to you and we'll go to Otis and then Michelle, I'll have you come on the next one. So the main struggle I faced this week, and if I were mentoring someone dealing with the same struggle, I'd advise them to go Ophelia. Really look into VAs. I did so much admin work last week and just prepping for slides and the videos and the editing. And I just, I remember driving back from my daughter's school and I was so pissed off that I was running late because 
I was in the middle of editing and just, you know, just admin stuff. Like, and when I was at the um, Focus and Fire, I forgot the gentleman's name that came up. And, and it's like, I don't know why. Well, okay. I do know why. <laughs> Let me stop there. I don't commit to a VA because that would require me to stop, slow down, get my systems in place, and then delegate it to her. And because I don't slow down and do all those things, I haven't hired a VA or, or reached out to you guys to do a VA, all the lists and stuff. But it's just more and more like the signals are going like, you need a VA. I'm, I'm angry when I'm trying to finish up some work and it's taking me away from something else like videos and being on social. God, I, I absolutely love this. And I'll tell you what, my executive assistant, Judith, hopefully the audio is better. I just turned it up. My executive assistant is on this call. She is on every single call. When it comes to clipping this, when it comes to my newsletter, when it comes to admin tasks, running reports, sales competitions, like I literally take all that stuff off my plate and say, Judith, can you please do it? And in some crazy way, she's able to do those things and say, do you have any other projects for me? And so all the time that it would spend doing that, I'm freed up to do the things that I truly love, which is coaching, training, developing, and bringing people into our environment. So I, I'm able to stay in my lane. And I remember a time when I didn't have Judith. And now that I have Judith, I'm busier doing the things that I truly, truly love. And she's been a game changer for me. And I've never been able to meet Judith. She's in the Philippines and she has been a game changer for my business. And we run our business with 15 different virtual assistants. So great stuff, Ophelia. Otis, let's hear from you, my man. Let's answer this question. And uh, this is a cool little trick that Judith taught me too with the Zoom screen so I could see myself when I'm seeing you guys. Let's go. Uh, being challenged and adapting. Like uh, this injury is really taking a toll on me at, at certain points. Um, at a certain point, it's being beneficial to me. Um, I guess the slow time, being able to restructure things, uh, being able to really focus in on some leads and 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 and, and getting out there and, and working, but at the same time, you know, save some space for your mental space. I've been going so hard for the last like 30 days, literally, like it's kind of like burning me out because I mean, for me, it's an extra struggle. Like I'm on crutches, uh, pretty much way more than I should be instead of on my scooter. Um, so adapting to the, to the days I've, I've, I've obviously overcome certain stuff with my physical health, being able to do all that stuff and, and with buyers. So just being able to know how to adapt and change and, and, and also keep it into your mental state. Cause it's been so hard to focus because I have to do all these things, but it's okay to be uncomfortable. Just figure it out. I've did some, re, um, revising and doing things. Uh, things just been so much smoother now trying to get groups of, of clients to go together. Uh, instead of just, you know, five showings in one day and predominantly like a lot of businesses in Richmond right now in the Fairfield area for me. So just really focusing and hunkering down and relying on the team. Um, I have delegated a few leads to some newer agents and I put together an event that me and Christina are going to do to focus on people wanting to get in the business and for newer agents. So it's been like a double attraction of getting people into the business and showing the people in the beginning of, of the steps of knowing how to talk to your lender and what to expect and stuff. So a lot of stuff coming soon, but uh, well, take some well, time to be uncomfortable and learn how to adapt and change. I love it. I love it. Let's go. Um, let's go, Michelle, and then Samandi, and then we'll go to the next question. Let's go, Michelle. Rapid fire. So the main thing I struggled with this week is imposter syndrome. Um, I know that I have skills and knowledge and education, and I have the reviews and the feedback from people that say I know what I know and, and I know what I'm doing. But for some reason this week, I have just really been struggling with imposter syndrome, feeling like I, I don't really know what I'm doing or how to do it. But I've been telling myself and what I would tell someone else is sit down and look at your history, look at your clients you've worked with, look at the people who come to you for advice and, and knowledge and remind yourself, you got this, you know what you're doing, you have the skills and the knowledge and the training. So just step in it and walk in it. And that's what I've been struggling with this week to just step in it and walk in it. Wow. You know, I absolutely love that because 
each of us are going to experience opportunities for growth. And right now you're experiencing an opportunity for growth. And the best way to see that path of growth moving forward is to go backwards, right? Because Michelle, there's so many things that you've done as being a mom, being a professional, being in Kaiser for as many years as you were. There's been points in your life that you've experienced tremendous levels of growth. And if you think back about it and you break that down into phases, and we've done this exercise before, and be like, okay, step one was like, acceptance. Step two was discipline. Step three was execution. Step four was follow through, whatever that map is for you. Now, when you actually write that down, the phases of the growth, now it's like, okay, cool. I have my own model of growth. I have my own model to get through the challenges that I'm facing because I've done this before and I know that I can do it again. So Michelle, that's a really, really great way to look at it. And I love that self-advice. Let's go to and then we're going to go to the next question. So Mandy, what's good? Let's hear from you. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you, Otis. Sorry, what was I going to say? Oh, nothing. I, I thought you had your hand up for this question. No, I didn't. Okay, cool. Do I have my hand up? I don't know. I thought I saw it no, up. No, I don't. No. Uh -oh. Okay, sorry. So, so, Mandy, but while you're here, keep yourself off of mute. Who is someone that needs your A game today and why? Who is somebody that needs my A game today and why? Yep. Uh, so, uh, all my credit repair clients that want to buy in spring and I need to hurry up and get them to buy. Okay. Cool. So what are you going to do to be on your A game for them today? Is that a phone call? Is that um, an hour of, of, of emails? What's that look like for you? So I already, ha I have two CRMs, you know, one for my credit repair and one for um, my real estate. So they're in both. So okay. they're looking at houses so they can take, so they can get used to the numbers and familiar with what's going on out there. So when that time comes, they're, they're knowledge on the market. Good. I love it. I love it. Uh, Damien, you threw your hand up as soon as this question came up, big dog. Let's hear from you. Who's someone that needs your A game today and why? Um, my clients, they need my A game. And I mean, this, this, uh, this question is a little layered. So is the answer because if I serve my clients at the highest level, then that trickles down to my family who also needs me on my A game at all times because they are the recipients of the results of me playing at the top of my game in uh, in whatever it is that I'm doing. And, and what we're speaking about right now is real estate. So I have two clients. Um, one, we're waiting just for the, uh, the contract to be ratified today. It was a referral that came from a past client, and she really trusted me to get the job done that another realtor couldn't do for her because she tried to go elsewhere. And then her sister was like, why don't you go to Demian? Like, he, he can get you results. We've seen two houses in the second house we're going to be in contract on today and um, another client that I sold a condo to in Berkeley a few years ago he recently got married wants to buy a single family home and we put offer in about a month ago now in San Jose and we're yeah we're still at the negotiating table but I've been working hard and diligently for this client to make sure they don't overpay and get taken advantage of and to get the house that they want so yeah, long, long answer to say my clients need me on my A game because my family does as well. So to me, and so, so in the next couple of days, we're potentially putting two new deals on the board. One for sure. Let's, let's hope this San Jose thing works out. Yeah. yeah. I love it, bro. I love it, man. And listen, God, take a page out of his book. This whole, this whole sentiment of work until it works literally. Like he made some decisions the last couple of months and said, I'm going all in on video. I'm going to make sure I'm exposed. I'm going to make sure that I'm continuously doing the things, even when I might not see the results, right? He is, I don't know how many videos that you've made in the last six months. It's been a lot. And that's just about getting his name, getting his voice out there, just being consistent. And now things are starting to come together for you, my man. I could not be happier for you, for them, and for your family. And a testimony to you making somebody mad and spurring them into action. <laughs> appreciate you a lot. <laughs> I appreciate you too, my man. All right, let's continue going on. One action that I could take today that demonstrates my excellence and value. Just one, you guys. I don't need a laundry list of things, but there's one thing that I could do today that demonstrates my excellence and my value. What is that? Let's go. Who wants to answer that question? Uh, I'm looking forward to being pissed off. Okay, good. I'm, I'm going to hold you to that. Who wants to answer this one? If I don't get an answer, I'm just going to go see her. I see her. I want you to answer that question and we'll cruise on to the next one. One action that I can take today that demonstrates my excellence and my value is go. All right. So one action that I am taking today is that I'm um, 
meeting with my neighbors for coffee. And one of the things that I've decided that I'm going to do is just um, really try to uh, make connections and bring neighbors together. Um, so I've Today I'm meeting with neighbors over coffee, but in the bigger picture, I'm planning on creating um, a plant swap. And so that's something that I'm following up with today as well. So I'm trying to build community through things that people like to do, which is right now it's spring is coming. People like gardening. So, you know, let's do it. I absolutely love this. Absolutely love this. Um, on Monday, I'm going to have you, um, or next week I'll have you share your story. Uh, sorry, Docs. I'll have to share your story, your door knocking experience, because that's a really, really good story to share. Um, but do me a favor, you guys, throw your hands down if you have your hand up. That way I can get to a new hand. Um, and then let's go to the next question. One thing that I could do today that pushes me past my comfort zone, right? One thing, like, like here's the thing, you guys, today nationally marks quitting day. And you guys have seen this. Uh, January 19th marks quitting day in the United States of America for people that let go of their resolutions, right? I don't believe in resolutions. I believe in lifestyle, right? I believe in constant action, no matter what the fucking season is. That's a given. So I want to know for you guys, what's one thing that you're going to do that's going to push you past your comfort zone today? I don't need to think about weeks and weeks into this. I want to know today, right now, what's one thing that you can do to get yourself outside of your comfort zone? Ashley Jurovich, I'm going to go to you. Have you answer that question? Let's go. I'm going to hit 25 miles on my Peloton today. Ooh, what's the max that you've done in the past? 15. 15. Ooh, <laughs> 10 more. Today I feel, today. When, I feel when you're already at 15, I'm not saying it's easier, but it's like, that's almost like you're on the other end of it. I, I'm, I'm here for this. I cannot wait for you to do that. It's been on my goal list for like three weeks now. After you said that, that was the first thought. I said, okay, today's the day. I'm going to do it. And here's, here's who I want you to think about when you're at that mile 21, and it's so hard. I just want you to think about Kai. That's it. Think about Kai, 12 years old, born one pound, you know, all of her surgeries, and her on the elliptical saying, she calls me Choo Choo E. That's my nickname for her. She says, Choo Choo E, I'm going to go to six miles. I want that little voice to be in the back of your head, and I'm so stoked for you. So let's go. All right, guys, if you were coaching you today, and you were in my position, or if you were in your coach's position, if you have other coaches, like what was the message that you would need to hear? If you were coaching yourself today and you're having a session one-on-one -on -one with yourself, what is the message that you would need to hear today? Uh, let's go. Ophelia, I think that is a hand up from you. Um, Michelle, let's get somebody that hasn't answered, but if Michelle uh, keeps her hand up, I'll come to you again as well. Ophelia, tell me, if you were coaching yourself today, what is the message that you need to hear? <laughs> That's an old hand, but since I'm on now. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> I told everyone to please. You did. You did. And I completely zoned out. I, if you want to give somebody else. I no, hey, you're it. already here. So let's right, go. Right. <laughs> just, um, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. I was, I've been writing all of the stuff that you've been doing, like, that you've been asking. And honestly, I get in my head a lot. I'm like, oh, I can do this tomorrow. Oh, let's move this over here. I start to try to strategize when just do the damn thing. Just do it. And whatever right, you do, do finish it. The next do the day. damn thing. I love that. I love that. Let's go blessing. And then we'll go Romel. Then we'll go to the next question. So I have been in a... I have been in a personal coaching session all morning and it just comes down to stop fighting, stop fighting. It is right there. Like what you need to say is right there. It's ready to come out. Like just stop fighting and sit in the presence of what's happening and it'll be, and it'll be okay. Right. Go through you know, obviously I could see the emotion. We could see your emotion. We're all here for you. And like you have just been showing up and fighting and doing everything that you should like, give yourself some grace, give yourself some grace because you are doing all of the right things. Like when I think about like the consistency, the showing up, getting yourself, getting into the rooms, like you're doing all the right things. And I feel it's just, I mean, you're right there on the precipice of all kinds of things popping off for you. So I love it. Appreciate you. Let's go Romel. Romel, same question to you. If you're coaching yourself today, what is the message you would need to hear? If you were in my shoes coaching yourself, what's that message that you give to yourself? 
put my hand down because Ophelia said exactly what I was going to say. Okay. Um, but but much nicer. I would say, damn, Ramel, stop thinking about it. You're good at thinking. Just start doing. And thinking about the work, planning about the work is not doing the work. Just yeah. Think for five seconds, then do for 30 seconds. Oh, I love that. Kenny always says, you know, people spend so much time um, getting ready to get ready. Just just go. Just go. Make mistakes. Fumble along the way. But really, really good sentiment. I appreciate that. Um, I would know this week was a success if I did this, said, or felt this. I would know this week was a success if I did this, said this, or felt this. What would that be, you guys? Let me hear from somebody. Go ahead and throw your hand up. Actually, let's go. Let's go, Jeff. I uh, would love to hear from you. Uh, let's go, Chris Edwards. I think you have breakfast with baby girl, but if you have an opportunity to chime in, um, or Lissette, whoever has their hand up, it's hard for me to see everyone's hands. Uh, but let's go in the order that I called you up. Um, all right, this is a good one. So, um, I mean, I know what I need to do every single day in order to feel good about it at the end of the day, but in a lot of cases, I find other things to do, or I don't end up doing it or I avoid it. You know, in a lot of cases I do do it. And what it comes down to a lot and what I tell myself um, uh, is don't fear rejection, fear regret. So don't, don't, you know, make that call, but whatever that, and this is the part I need to do more of, but get on video, those types of things. Don't fear the rejection part of it, fear the regret part of not doing it. And if I can get to the end of the day and have no regret, then I feel awesome. God, I love this. I love this, you guys. Lissette, let's hear from you. Uh, sorry if I went out of order. Lissette, let's hear from you. I would know this week was a success if I did, said, or felt this. Go. Felt incredibly uncomfortable all day, all week. That's how I know that I'm doing the things that are going to help me grow. Because that's what we avoid, you guys. We don't like rejection. And it comes with the territory. We are in a rejection-based business. It's not personal. We take it personal. And for me, the beginning of the year has been about every day walking uncomfortably because that's the only way I'm going to grow. God, I love this. I love this. Let's start a rapid fire. Same question to you. I would know this week was a success if I did, said, or felt this. Go. If I got my upcoming listing under contract. So that, that's, my, that's my goal. So getting this listing under contract. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. Uh, let us know if there's anything we could do. If you want to drop the address down below, if you need anything from us. And then what are you committed to accomplishing this week? And I'll let you guys sit with that one. What are you committed to accomplishing this week? What needs to happen? Is it you deploying your campaign, you know, creating seven videos? I don't know what that looks like for you, but I want to go back to the second to last question. I would know that this week was a success if I applied tremendous amounts of pressure. If you guys are around me enough, you'll know that I truly, truly enjoy putting pressure on myself to see how well I can actually do under pressure. And so focus and fire, that was pressure. All the follow-up for focus and fire, that is pressure. And I just did something right before this call to apply a little bit more pressure on me. So this next year, uh, this year, excuse me, we have our annual EXP con in Miami. And if you're an EXP agent, I want you to make sure that you put that in your budget to be at that event. And so just like I'm asking you guys to get outside of your comfort zone, I'm going to share with you what I was willing to do to get outside of my comfort zone. So I reached out to the vice president of growth for our beautiful company. And I told them, Hey, hope all is well. Wanted to reach out. I'm speaking at Inman next week for my first time on stage. Can't, can't wait. I put together a powerful presentation titled how to keep your team engaged despite the size. I would love to do this presentation at EXPCon. How does one go about getting on the speaker list or at least considered? Right. And so the things that I'm asking you guys to do, raise your hand, get in the rooms like that's a really, really big stage. And I really want to be there to talk about our journey. And so if I'm going to ask you guys to, to do those things and if I'm going to answer that question myself, I would know that this week was a success or this day was a success if I put purposely applied pressure on myself. And I believe that we need to do more and more and more of that. And so, you guys, I heard some beautiful things from you guys. Thank you for following along in this new presentation platform that I just learned because of Judith. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Hopefully, you guys found it pretty cool. But let's do this. I got a couple of minutes. I'm going to go through a key, couple key takeaways. I have a guest here, Natalie. She came here as a guest of 
Do you call her Toots or do you call her by her real name? Uh, I call her Sola Toots. I don't know her on Toots level yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Cool. All right. So Natalie, you're our guest here. One key takeaway from our time together today. Let's go. Um, that people seem to stay in the group and the in the team. Um, that's a huge green flag for me. Um, I'm brand new. I'm about three weeks into EXP. Um, so I have so much to learn <laughs> right now, but I'm loving the energy that you guys have and you all seem very genuine and yeah, excited cool. to be involved. Well, I love it, Natalie. And listen, a lot of people leave and, and here's why. I, I believe that, that we're not for everybody, but we're for most. And I believe that when you raise standards in an organization, people are either going to play at that championship level or they're going to see themselves out the door, right? So if you're going to be on this team and you choose to align with us, know that you are playing on a championship team. And so there's going to be pressure and, and that's a good pressure. And so you're either going to rise to that occasion or you're going to say, oh no, that's not for me. So we're number two in the world for a reason. And so we're looking forward to talking with you more. Thanks for being here. Kevin Magna, uh, let's hit him with the final takeaway from our session today, big dog. And it's good to see you. Hey, great to see you guys too. I really appreciate uh, this forum always available to us. I wanted to, uh, this is going to be hard for me, but I wanted to let you guys know about my three takeaways uh, for today are aligned with um, the passing of my sister in early December. Yes. And um, <laughs> there were three lessons I took from her and they, they apply to business as well. <clears throat> So number one, do what you want when you want. Don't wait for tomorrow what you can do today. Number two, do what your intuition is telling you. Don't eat the crap. Don't schedule that vacation. Say hello to an old friend and put the past behind you. And number three, I think really applies to us in this business, but we got to love ourselves first. So take wow. those with you guys and let's get out there and kick ass. Wow, Kevin. I, I had no idea. My condolences to you and to your family. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I have goosebumps. We're sending you light. We're sending you love. We're selling you, sending you healing energy, my brother. Thank you for closing out this session in such a powerful way. Thank you guys for being here once again. Next week, we are taking the week off from coaching because I will be in New York City representing you guys. Um, so, Kevin, thank you for sharing. Um, that's all I have to say, you guys. As always, keep it moving towards your dreams, goals, and vision, and have an amazing, amazing weekend. And if you need me, just give me a call. I appreciate you guys.